Good morning once again. Okay. Where are the people go? Okay, now here is the first example we can look at. Uh, it says, it says, forces seven and four act away from a common point, making an angle theta with each other given that the magnitude of their resultant is 10.75. Now, this time round, this question has given you the resultant. They want you to find the direction, the angle, theta, and the direction of their resultant force. Now, these two forces are acting away. One force is acting that way. Perhaps another is acting that way. The two forces are acting away from each other. At an angle theta, we don't know. But these two forces are seven newtons and the four newtons. And they have told us they have a resultant, which is 10.75. So if their resultant is 10.75, now this is what we can handle. One, we can sketch an appropriate vector triangle of forces. And how do we do that? Remember, I told you, you start with one force. I can start with the four. Then I follow it with the seven. Then my line of the resultant will start from the bottom of the four to the head of the seven. And how do we go about this? It means down here, this is the four Newton. Then this is up here, is the seven Newton. Then this is the line of the resultant. I can call this FR. But remember, if you're to analyze down here, this angle initially was theta. If that angle initially was theta because of this in the, in the initial drawing, I can estimate the angle inside to be what? 180 minus theta. Do you see that? The question has also gone further and said, find also the angle of the resultant force, which is the direction of the resultant force. Now, because we have been given the magnitude and we have been given the forces, I can use the cosine rule of triangles, which says S squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of capital A. With this note, I can assume my A can be the four Newtons. My B, no, my A can be the FR. My B can be the four Newtons. My C can be the seven Newtons. Okay? If that is the case, then what is going to happen is we shall have to substitute. When you substitute, this is what is going to happen. You're going to have A is the resultant which is FR squared is equal to seven squared plus four squared minus two times seven times four, cosine of what angle? 180 minus theta. But FR was given as, but FR has been given as 10.75. So substitute, we shall have 10.75 squared is equal to 49 
plus 16 minus 28 times 2 is 56. Cos of 180 minus an angle is negative cos of that angle. Those of us who have visited trigonometry, if you are new, you will need to visit my YouTube channel, Lubama Hamza, and check out some of the topics we have handled. And then you consult me in case of any challenges you land on. Some of the topics we have handled, for example, in mechanics, I'll mention all of them I've covered in every day. In mechanics, we have covered linear motion. We have covered vertical motion under gravity. Then we have also covered motion on an inclined plane. And now we have introduced resolution of forces. So those topics, I've uploaded them on my YouTube channel. Please visit there. The same applies to the physics we have covered. I'll also mention in the physics time. Now from here, so you'll find there trigonometric lessons and then see how best you can have them answered. We can now make cos theta the subject. Someone square for me. When you square 10.75, that's 100 what? 115.5625. 115.5625 is equal to 49 plus 16. The answer is? 65. 65. Minus, now becomes a plus. 56 cosine of theta. When you cross over, we shall realize what? Subtract over you have 115.5625 minus 65. The answer is going to be, when you take off 65, there's a balance of 35. 35 plus 10, 45, 50 point, 0. 0.5625. Is equal to 56 cos of theta. You realize that cos of theta is 50.5625 divided by 56, and our theta is cos arc. Divide by 56. What answer do you get? What else did you get? Guys, are you there? Press your calculators. Twenty-five point four five. Twenty-five point four five degrees. Two decimal places are enough. So that's the first question. Find theta. The second question says find the direction in which the resultant force acts. The direction in which the resultant force acts is alpha. So we can say sine of alpha over the opposite side C is equal to sine of 180 minus theta out of the opposite side, which is FR, using the sine rule. So we shall have sine alpha out of 7 is equal to sine of 180 minus 25.45 divided by the resultant force, which is 10.75. So can you make alpha the subject? Alpha will become sine arc of the whole of that expression, which is sine of 180 minus 25.45 times 7 divided by 10.75. Someone confirm to me what is alpha.
Anza. First subtract is 180 minus 25.45. When you get that answer, that is around what? That is around 154.55. So sine of 154.55 equals, you get the answer times seven, then you divide by 10.75. Then shift sign of the answer. Yeah, the boys now we have a second boy. We had one. We had around eight girls with one boy. Now we have two boys. The Swale and the Jesse. The boys, you're so quiet. Yes, the lady was giving an answer. An answer. Guys, sixteen point two. Sixteen point two. Now, when you say sixteen point two, you say sixteen point two above the four newton force, because you see the alpha is above this four newton force. Eh? So, in conclusion, you say sixteen point two degrees above the four newton force. Okay. So we can have that screenshot shared or taken, then we can look at part B. Part B, I'm going to assume it has a mass of two kgs and we find the acceleration. But we can say hence determine the acceleration if forces act on a mass of five kgs. That is what I was explaining in the beginning. So I'm assuming that question has been, we are, I have not been able to go to get a very clear one. So let me assume this one has that question attached. So are we ready? Have we taken the screenshot? Hey. The other person has to contact me via this number and ask me to add you to the group. That's how I know that you need to be added on the group. Okay, can I proceed to part B now? I have a question. Please go ahead. How do you know that your arrows should be in the east direction or one can place one arrow in the east direction and another in the west? Now, here they are not specified. Yeah, where well, they have not specified. Okay, very good question. If they have not specified, you assume any direction. But it's always good to assume this direction of the first quadrant. Remember, if you are drawn a quadrant, remember from trigonometry, if you are drawn quadrants, yeah, 
That would have been the first quadrant, the other and the second quadrant. So it is always good to assume the first quadrant if they have not specified. Reason being, you minimize uh, use of negatives. Eh? But if you overuse other quadrants, you will have to deal with a lot of negatives. But also what you're saying is correct. You can use any other direction. That for example, what if I assume, like what you're saying, if I draw what you're saying, what you're saying can be like this. Uh, what if I assume, uh, uh, they have said, they are just at an angle to each other. One can even draw them like this. Seven for Newtons. Another one can say, ah, ah, me, I want to be so special, different from all other students. Me, I want to draw a rare diagram. Then the learner comes and draws a very rare diagram, different from all other students, by saying, since they say they act at forces at angles of theta, one can be seven down this way, one can be four up this way at an angle there, theta. The appropriate diagram for this one would be, the seven comes this way, then you follow it with the four up there, then the resultant will take on such a direction. Then this would be 180 minus theta. Then for this other one, you would draw it like this, with, for example, the four Newton, then you follow it with the seven Newton, and then you follow it with the resultant there. So if the question is open, like you said, Madame, eh? It is okay. As long as you draw the correct appropriate triangle, you'll always get the right answers. Okay. Any other question on that? So if no further question on that part, let us go to part B. Part B says, we have such forces which are supposed to be resolved. And we said we can resolve using various methods. We can use a table. We can resolve using any other skill. We are seeing that if you have, we have the forces like this. We have another one acting this way. We have one acting that way. We have one acting this way. Yeah. Now all these forces, We have five Newtons. We have two Newton, three root two Newtons. We have 10 Newtons. We have eight Newtons. We have another force this way, I don't see it, which is 12 Newtons. Uh, it is always best you start resolving from the diagram before you go to the table, before you go to write down what you resolved. First, show us from the dial. Not show us, but yourself. Of course, we know that the five is acting vertically upwards. It has no component in the horizontal. This one is acting horizontally. It has no component in the vertical because the angle between them is 90. Whereby, if you resolve the 90 to the vertical, you will be compressing. You will be compressing 90. So, in that sense, this is what is expected to happen. In that sense, we are expecting to have we are going to expect to have one to resolve. If this is 45, my friend asked me, teacher, when do you subtract to off from 90? If I want to resolve this force to the horizontal, 90 minus, because the whole of this angle is 90, you say 90 minus 45, the balance down here will be 45. So when you resolve, you will have to compress 45 with 3 root 2. When you compress an, uh, for an angle, we use cosine. So 3 root 2 cos 45 will be the resolution of 3 root 2 to the horizontal. Then to resolve 3 root 2 to the vertical, you either move up, because 45 confuses people in this way. 45, it has the same ratio, whether you're compressing the angle or you're moving away from the angle. And in that sense, when you look at it, you choose the 45 to use, whether the one which is up or the one which is down. So learners, which 45 do you want to use? Do you want to use the one which is down or you want to use the one which is up?
Which 45 would you like to use? Can we use the 45 up? Or we move away from the one which is down, okay. When you move away, we use 3 root 2 sine 45. Then come to this angle down here, it was 60. When you resolve the 60, I mean the 10 away from the 60, you will have 10 sine 60. When you resolve the 10 to the vertical, you'll have 10 cos 60. Then this last one has 30 degrees. We can resolve the 8 vertically downwards by compressing the 30, which is 8 cos 30, which is 8 cos 30. And then we can also move away from the 30 by resolving 8 by saying 8 sine of 30. Now, those red resolutions you've seen, apart from this treadle and this five, but the rest of the reds you've seen are resolved components. That's why this topic is called resolution of forces. So we have resolved this one to the vertical. We have resolved this one to the horizontal. We have resolved this one to the vertical, resolved this one to the vertical, resolved this one to the horizontal, resolved this one the horizontal. Now remember, this is x-axis, but positive. This one is negative x-axis. This is y-axis, but also what? Positive. This side is negative y-axis. So those in the negative direction attach negatives to them. Those in the positive directions, you will have them with positives. So we can come and say, some of forces in the horizontal are going to be, we have twelve is a positive, plus eight sine 30 is also positive. In the x-axis, there is a negative of three root to two acting in the west. There is also another negative 10 sine of 60. So we can have 12 plus, Eight times sine 30 is eight times a half, which is a four. Minus three root of two times one over root of two. The newcomer's sine of 45 is equal to one over root of two. Sine of 30 is a half. Sine of 60 is root of three over two. Sine of uh, cos of 45, is also one over root of two. Uh, cos of 60 is a half. Sine of cos of 30 is root three over two. Now these reviews, you need to, you need to visit my YouTube channel and look for the trigonometric relations and uh, see how best you can have these interpretations covered. And also if there is any challenge, you let me know and I see how best I'm going to help you. There's one lady, I think it's Monica. Monica, I'll have to arrange for you a session so that I can take you through the challenge you asked me about in trigonometry. Okay, so minus 10, sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. I lose this root to this one. I lose this 2 to this 5. This will give me 16. This will give me 16 minus 3 minus 5. Minus 5 root three. Okay, so with that, with that we can have 16 minus three minus five root three. So, what answer do you get here finally? Get me that horizontal axis, horizontal forces.
Someone give me an answer. Four point three three nine seven. Four point three three nine seven newtons. Then the second one is the forces in the, in the vertical. Some of the forces in the vertical. Now the vertical, remember we had the positive verticals as three root two sine 45 plus, there is also a positive five there in the vertical. Then the negative verticals, we had negative 10 cos 60 minus eight cos 30. When you simplify, we shall have three root two times one over root two plus five a minus 10 times a half minus eight times root three over two by two ones by two four by two ones by two five. This by root two, you get ones. This will give us eight minus five minus four root three. Calculator, what else did we realize? Someone give me an answer. The rest, you don't have calculators. Negative three, three, nine, two, eight, two. Thank you. Now, very sensitive statement here. This time round, the answer in the vertical is a negative. The first answer in the horizontal was a positive, okay? So you need to know where is the direction of the negative vertical. Masse, where is the direction of the negative vertical? Is it upwards or downwards? Downwards. Downwards. So I can start with the negative vertical going down. Then, uh, Shakira, where is the positive x axis? I mean, the positive, uh, the positive what? The positive horizontal. Is it in the west or in the east? Shakira, are you there, Burinji Shakira? Yes. Hey, where is the positive horizontal? Is it on the west or in the east? It is in the east. So I sketch now going towards the east so that I can also follow the other horizontal component. Now, when you sketch it like that, this is the direction for the 4.3397. This one is the 3.9282. Now, because this one you have showed it's going down and we have confirmed that down is the negative y, do not attach the negative again. Why? The arrow shows the negative. So if the arrow is guiding you with the negative, then just sketch the final result line for the resultant, and this final line will give us the resultant force. Therefore, we can get the resultant force from Pythagoras theorem and say it is going to be 4.3397 squared plus 3.9282 squared. When you press the answer, what value do you attain? Ah, there where has she been?
8535 newtons. 8535 newtons for the small places. Finally, we also need to get the, before you get the, they asked ask for the, I, I, I put this second part. Hence, determine the acceleration if the forces act on a mass of 5 kgs. Remember, I told you acceleration is got from the resultant force divided by the mass. So this is 5.8535 divided by 5. And what is the answer? 1.177 meters per second squared. We confirm. So have we got, have we, I think that's the acceleration. We also need to get the direction because the question said, find the magnitude and direction. Now the direction, we need to say, tan theta, because I told you trig will always come back, is 4.3397 divided by 3.9282. This will bring about theta being the tan arc of that ratio. What answer do we get? Someone has an answer in the chat. I can Maria. Maria. Who is your honey? You're greeting honey. Oh, hello, honey. Come on. We are in mathematics, mechanics, my friend. I can We are in mechanics, mathematics. You wait when we bring a test. That's when you know that the world is not seen. Aha, shift turn inverse. What do you get? Akakwasa Maria, give me that answer. Shift turn inverse of 4.3397 divided by 3.9282. So Ali, I'm going to post this, this work on my YouTube channel. You'll come and see the, the video. Because I can't repeat. Hey, repeat for you number one. Eh? If I repeat for you number one, hey, it is kind of long. That's why I'm saying I'm going to post for you the video. Eh? Then I'll share with you the link. You'll inbox me and remind me later. 47.8 degrees. 40? 47.8. Only. Now the final conclusion, we need to conclude this. Look at where it is. If you assume eh, this is a compass. Eh? Someone was asking me, when do you subtract off 90? Here I am to answer you. Firstly, I can move from south going to east. So it is south, 47.8 degrees. Going where? East. Oh, but remember I told you you have to put a compass if you're concluding using that. 
yeah? Or one can say it is 47.8 degrees to 2 the downward vertical. Sorry, away from the downward vertical. Away from the downward vertical. All these are conclusions, they are correct. Another one can say, if I want to move from east going this side, then that is when you subtract east, 90 minus 47.8, going where? South. You'll have what? You'll have east 42.2 degrees south. So this is correct analysis. This is correct analysis. This is correct analysis. And I can even use bearing from up this way up to here by saying 90 plus 42.2 degrees, which will become 132.2 degrees using bearing from north. Okay. So always for the new guys, this is not the final answer for the direction. You have to, because this direction is specific, these are vectors, you have to tell us exactly where is it acting. Reason being, in trigonometry, any quadrant can have 42.2 degrees. Any quadrant can have 42.2 degrees. So you have to tell us exactly in which quadrant are you talking about. That is why we specify, that is why that question of direction is always asked. They are not asking you to get the degrees, but they want you to give the mathematical interpretation of those degrees, where exactly they are heading to. Any other questions? I want to bring another category of examples. Short, if you say. If you say. What if you say? 42.2 degrees below the 12 Newton force. You're correct. Very lovely. That is very intelligent. Reason being, if they have not given you the compass, actually, that is you. The your answer is the best one. You know why? It's because if they have not given you the compass, or you have not put it there, and then you conclude using a compass, wrong. If you conclude using a compass and you have not drawn the compass there, put a compass here like this to show that ah, your north was acting up. But if you don't put it there and you conclude using east, you conclude using west, you conclude using a bearing, we shall cross you. But if you conclude using one of the forces, you are very correct. So your answer, as per that, what the question was said, your answer is the most correct answer. Thank you for that. So you can say it is 42.2 degrees below the trail of Newton force. Thank you. Another one? If no other one, let's look at our, uh, our second, uh, another number. But now, this other number, if you look at the numbers I've sent, there are numbers I've sent which are in vector form. Though we have not yet covered vectors entirely, some of these ideas are borrowed. And I'm going to show you how we handle numbers in case they're in vector form. Okay. Let me first go back to the other page, the white page. In a case for forces in vector form, For example, if I have force F1, which is a vector having A1, B1, Newtons, and I have force F2, which is a vector having A2, B2, Newtons, and I have force F3, a vector which has A3, B3, then the resultant of the forces is just the sum of these vectors the way you added them in olive. And how did we add them? We added them by saying it is A1, B1, 
plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3. Now, sometimes the vectors are given in another form. So the answer will be a1 plus a2 plus a3, b1 plus b2 plus b3. And that is the answer. Or sometimes the question is brought in a different way. They can't say force F1 is in terms of I and J. Then for this is force F1. Then force F2 is equal to A2 I plus B2 J. Then force F3 is equal to A3 plus B3 J. In this sense, still, to get their resultant vector force, we shall get the vector F1 plus the vector force F2 plus the vector force F3. And when you add, you will realize A1I plus a B1 J plus A2I plus B2J plus A3I plus B3 J. Then go and connect the eyes together. There is this I, this one, and this one. Then you'll have A1 plus A2 plus A3, close brackets, all this is I. A plus B1 plus B2 plus B3, and all these are J. So writing this, this is called a column vector. Then this one is in the IGF notations. So you can leave the answers in terms of IJ notations, or you can use column vectors. When you use column vectors, never write I and J again. Why? It is because the column, the first entry represents the I direction. Then the second entry represents the J direction. So these are just directions, I and J. They are directions on the axis, the X axis, you will find that it has a direction which is the I direction. Then the Y axis has a direction which we call the J direction. Okay. So with that screenshot that, then I take you back to our examples which I had posted. Then the rest of the numbers, which I will not have so you will go ahead and try them out. Okay, so can I go to the numbers? I've given you a brief of the intro of the, of the highlight of vector formats. So we are ready to go and do numbers in vector formats. So here we are. The question says, uh, the, the numbers we are not so clear here, but I have them. I can write them for you down. Forces, 3, 1 Newtons, 5, 12 Newtons, and 24 Newtons. Act on a mass of 2 kgs. Question one, calculate the resultant force of the particle. So we have force one as three one. Then we have force two as five twelve. Then we have force what? Three as negative four twenty. The resultant force will be F one. 
plus F2 plus F3. Therefore, the resultant force will give me 3, 1 plus 5, 12 plus negative 4, 24. When we add them together, we shall have, the, of course, now, this is the first lesson, but I don't expect you to do it this anymore. 33 plus 5 minus 4. Eh? You are five star students taught by five star teachers on five star gadgets. So I expect your presentations also to be five star. So next time you just say this is four, and down here it's going to be 37 newtons. This step, this step you can do in your head. Okay. But that is not the question. This question said, oh, they just said, find the resultant of the forces. This is the answer. When the question says, find the magnitude of the resultant. Are you hearing those two statements? They are different. Find the resultant, the resultant is the vector force. But find the magnitude of that resultant. When the word magnitude appears, we have to go ahead and sketch an appropriate vector triangle. Now, this is positive I, positive J. Positive I means positive horizontal axis. Positive J means positive Y axis. Then our resultant will act along this line. So what does that imply? It implies that we have a positive horizontal, which is four, and we have a positive vertical, which is 37 mm -hmm. newtons. With this, we can conclude and get the resultant force in magnitude. So the magnitude of the vector force, FR, is going to be equal to, use Pythagoras theorem, 4 squared plus 37 squared. And what is the answer? Now, sometimes if they don't ask you for the magnitude, look at the second question, says the magnitude of the acceleration of the particle. By all means, they are asking you indirectly, first get us the magnitude of that resultant force, then use it to find the acceleration. Because there is no way you will get there. Sometimes they can ask for the acceleration in vector form. I'm also going to show you how we handle that. Can we get this answer? Thirty-seven point two degrees. Thirty-seven point two degrees mm. only. Thirty-seven point two one five six newtons. Four decimal places. So can you also get theta? Tan of theta is going to be. Remember, this is the right angle triangle. It's going to be thirty-seven divided by four. With this, theta is going to be tan arc of thirty-seven out of four. Can someone give me the answer? Answer? Eighty-three. Eighty-three. Point eight two nine eight. Point eight two nine. Okay, eight. The full angles we write up to do two decimal places. Eh? 
but other items rate up to four decimal places unless specified. Now, how do we conclude this? Now, in vector form, eh, you should know this. Vectors are strictly guiding you that you're dealing with the x-axis and you're dealing with the y-axis. So you can say it is 83.83 .83 degrees above the positive x-axis. Okay? So because we are dealing with x-axis and y-axis strictly in vector form, this is the x-axis. I've said this is the y what? y-axis. So strictly you can. Sorry, the network jumped off. So I was saying you can conclude using those axes, eh? and then we can have those results. Uh, how many minutes do we have? Yeah, around 10. I wanted to give you one more. For the magnitude. The magnitude of the what? Of acceleration. Yeah, and now you finalize it. Magnitude of acceleration, you can get it from the resultant force we got. We got was what? Yes. Was 5 point what? Resultant force? Mm. The newcomers, we always take screenshots, please, eh? so that you can have the notes later. You write down your notes later. Is that what first was? When you get the resultant force, then remember they have asked for the acceleration. Mass was two kgs. So the acceleration should yes. be got from the resultant force out of the two kgs, which was five point what? It was five. It was what? Four. Eight. No one took a screenshot. We didn't take the screenshot. 37.2156. 37.2156. What was the resultant force after finding the square root? It was 37.2156. OK, 37.21. Five, six. Now divide by two, the answer will be uh, 18. 18.5178. That will be your result and force. So there is an example here. This number, you're going to try out this number, is it 1610? Then there is also this one, 1718, but you're doing part two. If the fourth force is removed, the fourth force is which one? One, two, three, four. You remove this fourth force. Find the magnitude and direction of the resultant. Okay. I think we can do that in the next 10 minutes. Resultant force would be, this one is in terms of I, J, and K. So I can extract the I, J, and K and write one, negative four, plus the second one is three, six. The third one is negative nine, one. Then the resultant force will be negative nine plus three, that is negative six plus one, negative five. Then you have negative positive two plus one, you get three. That is the resultant force in vector form. But the question said, find the magnitude. 
magnitude. Uh -huh. That is why I said whenever they say magnitude sketch. Now we have a negative i. A negative i is the negative x axis. Uh, let me mark this. <clears throat> we have a negative i. Negative i is the negative x axis. And then we have a positive y, which is a positive theory. Then we shall have our resultant in this direction. So this time round, this one has changed. It's not the usual ones you've been knowing or seeing. And in this case, you'll see that here we have a negative five, but you don't write negative, you just write, yes, please. To get the resultant force, you just add the forces. Uh-huh. You just add them. If you want to just add the i's, i1 plus 3i minus 9i is the same as saying okay. negative 5i plus 3 what? J. Then the resultant force is also going to be here, which is the magnitude of the forces. And then you also get its direction. Therefore, the magnitude of the forces in vector form, their resultant will become square root of three squared plus five squared, which is root of 34. And this answer is five point what? Excuse me, sir. Mm. But the five was negative. Yes. What is your question? How did it change to positive? Okay. Do you see that arrow of the five? Yes. Yes. But if I had drawn here axis, eh, you realize that the positive x axis would be this way. You agree? Oh. Yeah, and the y, yes. y axis positive will be up. Okay. Yes. I told you on that yes. diagram of the triangle, which is right angle, eh, the yes. negative, you don't write it on the name on the five because the arrow has commanded you that you have moved in the negative x what axis. Axis. Yeah, do you realize that point now? Yes. If the three was negative, it would have gone down with the arrow facing where? Down. You don't need to attach a negative on the three. You know why? It is because if you attach a negative on the three. When you're sketching, when you're finding the theta here, you're going to put a negative. Are you getting my analysis? You're going to put a negative, it will give you yes. an angle. The final angle you fail to interpret its negativity. But if you leave it now, if you use the positive like I've done, it will now be very easy yes. for you to interpret exactly where you are. And you set an inverse of three over five. What angle do we get? What angle do we get? Thirty-one degrees. Exactly. Thirty-one point zero. Thirty. Thirty-one point zero. Point zero what? I rounded off thirty point nine six three eight. Thirty point nine. Three. That was wrong. This was wrong. Nine six. Nine six. Nine six. Nine, six. Thirty point nine six. Okay, okay. Now that is why you should not over round. Wait, rounding off right to the small places in angles. The rest five. So in conclusion, what was the magnitude? What was the magnitude? 5.8316. In conclusion, you said the resultant force is?
5.8316 newtons acting where? Thirty point nine six degrees above the negative x axis. Or the negative horizontal. Because it is in the other quadrant, if it was in this quadrant, this side of the left or the right, we'd have said above the positive x axis. Okay? Any other questions? So the rest of the numbers, you try them out, check out this one. You just stop at resultant force and magnitude. If there are other attachments, moments, don't do them. Just only do resultant force only for all the numbers I've sent. So today we have finalized these items of resolving and uh, resultant forces. I hope next week I'll introduce projectiles. It's a new topic. You need to attend fully in the beginning. Otherwise, if you don't, don't come back for that lesson for projectiles anymore. We are doing we are doing it like for three lessons, but it's a topic which requires you to be there in the beginning so that you can see the items that come later. Otherwise, if you miss it, it will be hard for you to understand. Any other questions? No questions. We can have a group there. Try out the remaining numbers that I've shared with you on the group. And those newcomers who have just come in, please, we have a slogan here. I always use it in school. It says solve all the numbers. It means the numbers you land on should be able to solve all those numbers. If you want to be a comfortable mechanics uh, student, go ahead and solve as many numbers as possible. With that, I'm still Mr. Hamza Obama. I've shared my WhatsApp line. Those of you who need to contact me on WhatsApp and for any other questions, please do the needful. I'll always be there to help. Sometimes I may delay, but you keep reminding me and pushing me. I'll always get back to you. Okay, with that, and call it off. Thank you so much for your attendance.